Welcome back to the channel. Now this game, Instruments of Destruction, has just gotten a major update that introduces things like lasers, attachers, advanced building features that add levels of flexibility unlike anything I've seen before. But also on that list happens to be improved player water physics. So I built this boat a little while ago, so I just kind of wanted to see what the water feels like now with improved physics. This thing, oh, I should probably, okay. I forgot to activate the buoyancy of the boat. There we go, buoyancy is now activated. So now let's see, uh, let's see if this thing actually works on the water. Whoa, okay. There's a massive difference. That is actually, okay. But um, now my buoyancy settings are all messed up because the water used to have a lot more resistance. Boats are actually a lot more viable now. Like this actually feels like a real boat now. Well, I mean, at least compared to before. If you're wondering what it looked like before, this is what it looked like before. Absolutely massive difference. The water doesn't actually try to grab you and hold you back anymore. So let's go ahead and head back. So there's a lot of other stuff. I'm really looking forward to the lasers. The lasers, I've done some testing of all the new parts. The lasers are a whole nother ball game of destruction and deadliness, but I wanna work my way up there. But on my way to the lasers, there's a bunch of other cool stuff I wanna show off first. First of all is the flex beam, which is actually a really cool part. So this thing, it's kind of reminiscent of the beams in um, Besiege, if you guys have ever played Besiege. And that makes them super, super useful because they basically provide just structural rigidity. So like if I delete this flex beam, I can actually just attach a flex beam anywhere from one point to pretty much any other point, and it just makes it a rigid connector. And this is gonna allow for some insane design creativity because no longer do you need to build like on the build grid over to where you wanna go. You can just connect everything with flex beams and have all of these angles however you want them to be. So designs are gonna start looking amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and build myself a super simple testing vehicle to test out all these new parts on. And actually this gives me an opportunity to show off one of the awesome new advanced features. So I have this pivot right here. Now normally I would just build something off of this pivot and then I can set the max angle. So let's say I wanted to go 45 degrees in either direction. So now when I spawn it in, when I press the buttons, you can see it goes 45 degrees in one direction, 45 degrees in the other direction. And that makes a lot of sense. But one thing that's kind of crazy about this, this now gives me the ability to set the starting angle, like any angle in between its minimum and maximum. So I could have this start already in the 45 degree orientation, and then I could just start building off of it here. And this is kind of crazy because in games like Trail Makers and Scrap Mechanic, any moving parts that you use, they have to be in their default position in the build mode and you have to build off them in their default position and only after you spawn it in can you actually set whatever angle they want to be designated to. But this, you can do it in build mode with the one caveat that unfortunately, once you've started building off of it, the starting angle no longer becomes adjustable, which I'm assuming is just an issue with the complexities of trying to adjust this angle and then have all of the attached pieces not break the game. So I'm guessing it's uh, it's pretty complicated programming wise. At least that's the assumption I'm making. I don't really know much about game development. It would be amazing if we could adjust the starting angle after we start building off of this thing. All right, and with the power of the flex beams, I've created a vehicle that wasn't really that possible to create before, at least like something as simple of a shape like this with this X formation. So another new part to the list are these flex pivot and flex swivel things. So these also have the starting angle function where you can just set the starting angle of it, uh, but let's keep it at zero for now. So these are actually pretty cool. They actually act like a free pivot, but you can set the range in which it freely pivots. So right now the range is on zero, which means that essentially it has no freedom of movement. So you can see when I move back and forth, nothing happens. But now if I set the angle to let's say like 15 degrees. So now when I move forward, you can see it's gonna freely pivot back and forth between the max and min of 15 degrees. Now it would be cool if we could actually set a different max and min just like we can with the power pivot. But then if I set it up to like uh, what 45 degrees, then obviously it'll be 45 degrees. So that's kind of a cool function, just kind of like a free pivot, but you get to stop it at any particular point. And then you get the flex swivel here, which kind of works the same, but uh, it works more like a bearing than a hinge. So I've set the range to 45 degrees and attached these parts to it. So now as I move forward and back, you can see that they're allowed to uh, pivot freely, but within the 45 degree range. 
or I guess 90 degrees because it's 45 plus 45. So I can see these types of things being really useful if you want a part to be able to bend with gravity, but you don't want it to go past a certain point. Otherwise, it might interfere with your vehicle or something. So they could be used for things like that. All right, so now another one that's gonna be really fun to make for some really interesting uh, functions in creations is this attacher piece right here. It attaches to almost anything and it, it pretty much means it. It can attach to your own creation. It can attach to the ground. It can even attach to buildings, although buildings tend to get destroyed. But let's let's demo it right now. That word has multiple meanings in this game. We can demo as in like demonstrate or demo as in demolish and we're gonna do both. All right, I got an idea. I'm gonna build this off of uh, the parts that I've already demonstrated using the, the flex pivot and stuff to create basically like a flail with an attacher on the end of it. And we're going to whip it at the buildings or the ground and just watch it try to attach and see what happens. Oh, you know, it'd be useful if I actually have my starting angle already backwards. So that way this chain that I'm gonna create doesn't just kind of flop down in the wrong direction. Oh, also super useful. There's a new recent parts category, which um, is exactly what I need right now. As I go in between these two separate parts from two different categories, I can just keep switching back and forth pretty easily. All right, how's this feeling so far here? All right, I think I've picked a decent range. And then see, look at that. Oh, I'm definitely gonna have to make this thing a little bit heavier though. <laughs> I just look like, hi, hi. All right, I'm gonna experiment here and attach the connector on the end of a rope that is on the end of a flexible um, arm here. So I'm kind of curious how this is going to function. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I kind of like that. Can I do it like a whip? Eh. 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 I mean, let me see if I can speed this up. Oh, this is already on maximum speed. All right, so I readjusted this whip pivot point to be a little bit more elevated and have a stronger mechanical function using overdriven swivels instead of the uh, the power pivot because these, I think, can actually move faster. But what I can do here is uh, instead of having this ugly looking uh, support, I can just delete this and then use the flex beams to create this much more aesthetically appealing support like that. All right, now let's see how this feels. Oh boy, I forgot to put it on a, pre a pre-designated angle. Oh, that looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, this is gonna be fun. So with F, let's, let's take a look at the connector here. So when I press F, oh, there we go. I've connected to myself now. <laughs> it's actually connected to the swivel, so it moves with the swivel. Oh, that's pretty impressive. All right. There we go. And now I've connected it to the ground. Oh no. Oh, this is actually kind of almost working like a, um, a winch. Let's see, is it just gonna stay there? Oh, look at the stretch. I forgot that, wait. I did not expect the wire to have, and it's broke. <laughs> I didn't expect the wire to have that much stretch. It's a wire, not like a bungee. Well, you know what? Let's just go straight up cable for this. Yeah, if I zoom in on the connector here, when you press the button, you can see pincers come out and just grab whatever you're on. And it works really, really well. Holy cow. I mean, I just think that just, it's just not gonna come out. Okay, and I broke the cable. All right, let's actually try to use this thing on a building now. Here we go. Oh, oh, grab, grab. Okay, it's, it's just destroying. Oh wait, no. Oh, do I got something? It looks like I got some, oh! Did you see me just pull that support right out from under it? Oh! Oh, this works great. I think it's most effective when it grabs onto one of these metal beams rather than the uh, the concrete aspect. All right, there we go. That's really cool. Oh man, the whole cable just destroyed that. All right, you know what? Oh! All right, this one's made like entirely out of metal beams, so I'll probably have more success with this. There we go. Oh, that was interesting. It like, I didn't actually pull the metal beam out that I was grabbed onto. There we go. Come on. Oh, oh, it's taking some damage. And, oh! <laughs> I got so lucky with that. I grabbed it right as it disconnected and was able to pull the rest of it down. That was awesome. All right, so I feel like a lot of fun stuff could happen with the attachment piece. I mean, especially if you, you, like even attaching yourself to the ground can have its uses. So check this out. If I move this back and forth, you can see my vehicle is completely unstable, but say I don't want it to be unstable. I'll go ahead and activate the uh, attachment points. Look at that, zero movement. Zero movement. So if you want um, support legs for like a massive excavator or something, now you can have like pretty much unlimited stability. 
All right, but I think I've covered pretty much everything except for the red laser that we see here. This is probably the shining addition to this update. All right, I've just built a turret mechanism for this laser with the help of the flex beams. And uh, we have a couple different modes. We have toggle, we have normal, which is you have to hold it to keep it on, I think. And then you have slider, which I'm actually kind of interested in slider. So if I turn up the strength of this thing, I think what this allows me to do is um, start with a small little laser and then hold the button and I can increase the power of the laser. Oh man, I'm, I'm excited for this. All right, let's see how it functions. Minimum power first. All right, so I have a fully functioning turret. Okay, obviously it's uh, it's a little bit weak right now, but that's because we're literally on minimum power. Yeah, definitely uh, takes a little bit, but let's go ahead and compare that. Let's raise the power now. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh man, it's moving a little bit too fast. Oh, well that whole building is gone now. Okay, hold on, I need to make some adjustments to this thing. There we go. Ooh, oh, you know what needs to happen? I need to put an overdrive on this laser. All right, there's now an overdrive which should double the strength of the laser. So let's see what this feels like now. It's so powerful, there's a screen shake. All right, well, now let's see what happens if I, oh, that's the, that was not the right control. That was my vehicle, not the turret. All right, and there we go. Well, we just cut right through that with no issue. All right, let's go over to this one then. I'm getting bad ideas. Uh, I kind of want to have just a chaos machine full of lasers. I love how the developer just added this clearly OP thing in here because, I mean, you just know it's gonna be fun. We can just create as much destruction as we want. All right, all right, hold on. I gotta see like what happens then. I'm just gonna add another laser right on top of this one with an overdrive as well. Now I got some double laser action here. <laughs> The screen shake is ridiculous. All right, here we go. Oh man, it's so good. Oh, I, I kind of want it to get to a point where it just takes one sweep at this speed. Like there's only a couple of supports over here. It definitely takes two for like a back and forth. There we go. All right, let's see how this tower handles it. Yeah, well that tower actually, they got cut pretty easily. All right, I got one more crazy idea I wanna try with this that is a little bit of a test for an idea I wanna make a dedicated video about, but I've just maxed out the um, the speed of this servo. So when I turn, that's not that, you know what? I'm switching it to a fast servo. I want this to spin as fast as I can. Okay, I mean, it's moving so fast that it has such a small amount of time to actually uh, be in contact with anything. So I was wondering how that was going to affect the effectiveness of the laser. Oh, I'm actually starting to um, wobble back and forth now that my attachment blocks are only in the center. But as you can see, it's only two lasers and it's still pretty effective. Now imagine, if you will, a Da Vinci tank of lasers going in all directions, spinning like crazy. Just basically a death sphere of red lasers. Why, it cannot hit these ones. I'm gonna have to slow, there we go. All right, all right, slow down, slow down, stop now. We're getting a little bit laggy. All right, well, I'm really excited to start playing with some of these things to build a dedicated laser creation. And I'm also excited to see what the workshop's gonna end up coming up with in the next week or so. So if you have any suggestions on stuff you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments below and maybe I'll do that for the next video. If you guys enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some other stuff that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.